Hey there, Sarah here and welcome back to my channel and also welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're going to do some cooking together. I have a bunch of new recipes to share with you. We're going to make a full dinner of new recipes together and that includes dessert. So I hope that you'll find something that you enjoy today. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to get started with this homemade barbecue sauce. I'm just turn my burner on quickly, sort of a medium heat. And it starts with two and a half cups of ketchup. This is going to be for grilled chicken. So I wanted to go ahead and get this barbecue sauce cooked up. That way I can put it into the refrigerator until we need it later on. It'll be nice and chilled. Two and a half cups of ketchup, half a cup of brown sugar, packed brown sugar. Um, what else? It has mustard, two tablespoons of mustard have all my measuring spoons out here because I felt like this is going to require a lot of measuring. So I thought I better just go ahead and get them all out. One and two. We will give the measuring cup a little spritz. Hopefully the honey will come out easier. Just a cooking spray. Half a cup of honey. Yeah, you can see this is going to be a really sticky sweet barbecue sauce. Straight in there. We also need some molasses. All right, quarter cup of this. I would not say that that helped. <laughs> oh well. Sticky stuff. Next up is some liquid smoke. That's what's going to give this a smoky flavor, and it's a quarter cup of that. That's a pretty good bit. Hopefully, it's good. And then we need some Worcestershire sauce. That is a tablespoon. Now on to some of the seasonings. Um, it calls for two tablespoons of onion powder. I don't think I quite have two tablespoons, but I'm just gonna pour in what I have left. That was probably one tablespoon. Two teaspoons of garlic powder. A quarter teaspoon of the cayenne pepper. You don't want to hit this too hard. And in fact, I may do a scant quarter teaspoon. Okay. Let me grab my red wine vinegar. I got this on my most recent Azure order. How much of it? A tablespoon. The recipe actually calls for white wine vinegar, but that's just not something that I usually have around here. So I'm just gonna use red wine vinegar. I need to also put in a split jalapeno so that we can get the, some of that spicy jalapeno flavor as well. So let me grab me a little knife and I'm just going to cut off the end there and I'm just gonna split it into half, in half. I may go ahead and take the seeds out too. I'll just do that over the trash can. Okay, and what I have here, I just was seeding this over the um, trash can. This is just a jalapeno and it is, a, it is split in half. First, I'll give this a quick stir and then I'm gonna drop in the two halves of this. This is just gonna give it flavor without having to chop up the pepper or anything like that. And I can just fish these out later once the sauce has cooked. Okay, it looks like barbecue sauce in here. <laughs> smells good too. All right, got everything kind of stirred together, so I'll just pop these in and they can warm in the sauce with the rest of the ingredients there. Yummy. So if you wanted it spicier, you could add more cayenne. You could add serrano pepper rather than jalapeno or whatever pepper you like. Um, you, can, you could make it as spicy as you like. We don't love spicy, like hot, hot, but I just like it to be flavorful, of course. 
Okay, so we'll just let this simmer. This is just gonna come up to a simmer and we'll let it simmer for 30 minutes like the instructions say there. And it can be working right here while we are doing some other things. The next thing we're gonna get started on is the dessert, which is called apple kolaches. And that is basically just a pastry with apple filling inside. So I actually put together the pastry this morning before I even got ready for the day. So I'll show you how I did that now. And then we'll get started on rolling out the dough for the apple pastry. Okay, let's get started on the dessert now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab a couple apples and we're going to chop these up. First, we're gonna peel them and we're gonna chop them up really finely to go in. This, this is what makes the apple filling for the apple pastries. Where is my vegetable peeler? Here it is. Here we go. Let's just peel these. I need like a little garbage bowl or something. And I have something, what is this in my pants? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a dryer sheet that was in my pant leg. I'm gonna toss that. I think that can go away. Okay, so I just need a little garbage bowl here. I'll use that one for my garbage bowl because we only need a cup and a half of the chopped apples. So we'll just quickly peel these up. This recipe looks so good. The dough was so easy to make and I just threw it into the refrigerator in two different portions. Um, and it said, that's the way it said to do. Split it into two different portions before you refrigerate it so that it'll be a little bit easier to work with. I considered having the recipe, but I figure if we have a whole bunch of these, I'll just give them away to my neighbor. Um, he likes to have sweets and treats now and again. So we'll give him some if they are good, number one, and if we have some extras, which I bet we will. Uh, the reason that I'm making these recipes today is my husband is going out of town, actually, for a couple of nights um, tomorrow. So I thought it would be sort of dual purpose. We'll have a delicious dinner tonight, and then I'll have some leftovers to eat throughout the days that he's away. So I think it's kind of a... a it's going to be good for both of us at this point. He'll have a tasty dinner and some new things to try. And I will have some leftovers. <laughs> Let me tell you a little bit more about what we're actually making today. So we're going to do the barbecue grilled chicken. I have a whole chicken in there that we're going to cut down into pieces. And I'll show you exactly how I do that. I am pretty familiar with cutting chickens down. We grow our own chickens from time to time to harvest and it's so simple and it's so much more cost effective to use a whole chicken and use all of the pieces from a whole chicken rather than parts. Now you see me use chicken breast that I buy from the store all the time. So it's not anything that I am like hard and fast on. I don't always use a whole chicken as opposed to buying chicken from the store, nothing like that. But 
um, it really can be a big savings. And you can get so many different things out of one whole chicken. But anyway, today we're going to do chicken on the grill. This is a recipe that will be good for spring and summer coming up. So I always love to grill. And this is going to be a perfect recipe for that. The only thing that goes onto these chopped apples is a tiny bit of lemon juice. I'm going to put a tiny bit of lemon juice. The recipe doesn't actually say that, but I just don't want them to turn really brown while I'm rolling out the dough and everything. So I'm going to toss them in a tiny bit of lemon juice and put some cinnamon on there. You know, this might be close to a cup and a half. So I'm just going to cut off, cut around the core on this one. We'll go ahead and make it all, but... Um, We'll go ahead and use all the apples, but a cup and a half of apples is not very much. This is probably just about a tablespoon of lemon juice, teeny weeny splash more. This bowl is not nearly large enough to mix that through, so I'm going to put it into a different bowl. I'm just going to have to use a bigger bowl because I know I'm going to make a huge mess if I try to stir that up in that in that bowl there. Okay, and now just a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon is what it calls for. I'm gonna do a little bit more than that because we really love cinnamony things. That was just a heaping quarter teaspoon. I'm just gonna toss the cinnamon through and then we'll set this aside and we'll get the pastry rolled out. Oh, okay, our sauce is starting to simmer. So we better give it a stir quickly and we will just set a timer for Alexa. Set a timer for 30 minutes. It looks like barbecue sauce, so we're good. I'm going to turn the heat down a tiny, tiny bit though. That way it doesn't boil up too much. Now that mousse is done, <laughs> I am going to roll this out. It says to roll it out to a 15 by nine um, piece of dough. So we'll see if we can get it there. Might have to bust out my ruler to see exactly where we're at. But then we're going to cut it into squares and go from there. Okay, after Moose finished hydrating himself, I did decide to bust out my ruler so that I can be sure that I get these little squares into the right size. I wanted to make sure that I'm following the recipe when I try a new recipe exactly as it's written the first time that I make it. And that way I can kind of judge from there and make my changes accordingly. But this time I did go with the apple as it said, and then I cut my little squares into three by three squares. And these turned out so well, so, so well. I loved these and Alan did too. They were not overly sweet, so you could really enjoy them, you know, without a lot of guilt. Also, this pastry recipe was a winner. So I definitely will use the pastry recipe again, maybe for a pie crust or something like that. But I think it's a solid pastry recipe and you should definitely keep it. I also think the next time that I make these, I would add a tiny bit of cornstarch to the filling. So maybe a teaspoon or two teaspoons to this amount of filling, I think would have been perfect because that would kind of thicken up any juices that these release and keep them from being a little bit watery. I do think that these are best served fresh, so make them for whatever you're going to make them for and then eat them probably in the same day. Now, we enjoyed them over the next few days, but they start to get a little bit of moisture in there and the pastry gets a little bit damp from the apples releasing their moisture. So that's why I think that they're best served fresh. Now, it doesn't really affect the flavor of them. They're still good, but best served fresh for the, for the best quality, I would say. I do think I would make these again, and I think you could probably change out the fruit as well, maybe to blueberries or something like that, but go ahead and add in a tiny bit of cornstarch. That way they don't start to get soggy and wet when they're baking up. I got all of these done. Don't they look 
adorable. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to try these. Look at how cute. They're gonna go straight into a 400 degree oven for 10 to 12 minutes. And I'm gonna keep a close eye on them because I don't want them to get too done. It just says cook until the bottoms are lightly browned. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And I put a little bit more apple into this second batch. I kind of went through and put a little bit additional onto the first batch as well, onto the ends, because some of them, they didn't have any sticking out the ends at all. So we'll see how they cook up, which ones bake up better, but I think they'll be delicious either way. So into the oven, they're gonna go for 10 to 12 minutes at 400 degrees. Okay, I've got two cooling racks I just pulled out and we need to get these little kolaches out of the oven. Let's see how they're gonna look. Oh, they look so good. Yes, they have toasty edges. Okay, I think they look perfect. Yes, the bottoms are nice and done. Okay, I think they look perfect. Now it says to leave them to sit for one minute before transferring them to a cooling rack. We're gonna leave those to sit for one second while we put away the barbecue sauce and then we'll transfer those over to a cooling rack. Quick taste. Looks great. It tastes incredible. Yeah, that is delicious. It's not spicy hot. Mmm, it's really good. It reminds me, I had a recipe that I loved a long time ago. I forgot all about it because I do that sometimes. Um, it was barbecue sauce mixed with apricot um, jam. That's what that tastes like. It's nice and sweet and it has a lot of good flavor. So, okay, I'm just gonna pour a cup into one container and I'll pour the rest into the other. Because the one cup is gonna be for basting the chicken as it cooks on the grill. So it may get essentially contaminated by the raw chicken at some point. So that's why you wanna set it aside separately from the rest. That is so good. Okay, yeah, that's delicious. These are just some deli containers that I have reused from stuff that we sell at the farmer's market. Okay, I have a little bit extra that I need to pour in here, so. Yep, that tastes great. You should definitely try that. If you like it spicier, add more cayenne and add um, either more peppers or add a hotter pepper, like a serrano chili or something like that. Okay, so this is just gonna go into the refrigerator until later and cool down. This one I'm not gonna be able to put the lid on completely because I filled it up too much. Go figure. But into the fridge these go. I'm gonna put this one on top. Really quickly now, I'm throwing together the little glaze or icing for these apple pastries. And first I started out by making a giant mess with my confectioner sugar, but um, I didn't wanna get a bigger bowl. <laughs> and that's just the way I am. So all I did was mix that with some, actually I used almond milk, a little bit of vanilla, and a tiny pinch of salt. Just drizzle that right over your little pastries and they're adorable. You probably can do a more beautiful job than what I did here, but they still tasted great no matter how they looked. Um, the recipe was a hit. So now we can try one. <laughs> Let's see how these are. Ooh, which one do I want? I'm going to take the worst looking one just because it's the worst looking one. And it's just, it's only bad looking because it kind of came open when it was baking. Let's try it. It's so good. It's so good. The apples are perfectly cooked. I was kind of scared that they might be a little bit hard, but I think because we chopped them up so finely, they're baked. I mean, they're cooked through. They're nice and soft, but they're not too soft. The pastry is so good. It's so, it's like just savory enough to complement the sweet apples and the little um, frosting that we put on there, drizzle that we put on there. Oh yeah, these are so good. So good. I tell you what, I think I could eat a lot of those. They're just the right amount of sweet and savory not super, super sweet. The filling amount. Okay. I was questioning the filling amount, but it's perfect. It's not over. It's not too much. It's, to, it's enough that you really taste it. Yeah, that is a winner. 
I know Alan is going to love these and they're just big enough that you can get just a couple of bites, you know, a couple of bites of a sweet without having to, you know, without being totally overwhelmed. So, mm, okay. Yeah. I highly recommend these. This is a winner. Next up is going to be the roasted potato salad. My husband will, is not a mayonnaise person. He will not eat mayonnaise based salads, anything. He's, he just doesn't go for that. He doesn't like mayonnaise at all. So this is not a mayonnaise based potato salad. It is a vinaigrette based potato salad. So I thought it would be delicious. It's something that we could eat hot or cold. So that sounds even better to me. Some of the veggies are roasted and then it all comes together with that vinaigrette dressing. So we'll get that going here. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna get this cut into pieces. Make sure it's nice and dry. I'm gonna start with some kitchen shears. First, I'm gonna flip it over. We're gonna start on the back. Flip it over with the neck facing me, and we're gonna cut out the backbone. I like to use kitchen shears mostly and then you can just throw them straight into the dishwasher after you're done cutting up the chicken and see these are nice ones because they come apart completely so you can take the parts take them apart and put them in and you don't have to worry about you know stuff being stuck in the cracks and crevices I got these on Amazon I can link to them below I have two pairs of these so I'm always I'll always have one pair clean. Okay, on this plate, I'm going to put the things that I'm keeping to put in the freezer, like uh, bits and pieces. And then on the other plate, I'll put the actual parts. So I'm going to cut off the wing tips as well. Those I can save in the freezer. And they will just kind of burn on the grill anyway. So I'm just going to take them off. Okay, next up... We're going to go through the breastbone here and it helps have a nice sharp knife for this which I don't so I'm going to use my kitchen shears I really need to legitimately invest in some knives and then probably I need to take care of them when I do <laughs> It's not that I have never had nice knives. I just don't really take care of them the way that I should, unfortunately. Okay. So there are, this is what you call now split chicken. Because it is literally a chicken that has been split in half. So now we're going to cut the um, leg and thigh away from the chicken breast and wing. So I like to use my kitchen shears again and cut the skin first. That way the skin kind of stays on the appropriate piece at the appropriate size. 
and you may have already cut through the joint when you did the um, backbone so yep sure did okay we'll do the other one exactly the same way first cut the skin that way it kind of stays where it's supposed to be And this one we did not. Sometimes that's the way it is. Okay. I'm going to cut that extra off just because now I'm not going to save that in my freezer, but I'm just going to cut it away and that will go in the trash. You could separate these further into leg and into actual drumstick and then the thigh portion, but I'm going to leave them um, whole. And now I'm going to cut the wing. Just want to cut into the joint here or basically just following the joint around. There's one wing. Great thing about chicken is you can get pretty good at it because they're always the same. This is some little pieces of bone. Okay, so what we're left with is the chicken breast. Now, what I'm going to do is just cut it like this because this is just a bony piece here. I'm just going to cut this away with my kitchen shears just to clean this up. Yeah, and that looks a lot better. Same for this side. We'll just cut away this bony. That's basically the ribs that's there. So we're just going to cut those away. There's not, you know, a lot of meat on them or anything like that. So we don't really need that. And then cut this bit off the end. Just some extra fat. Okay, there is our chicken all cut up. Now, before this goes on the grill, the only thing we're gonna do with it is season it with salt and pepper. And then as it's cooking, we will baste with that sauce. So this little bits, this bits of stuff here, the ribs, the wing tips, this one's ribs also, is gonna go into the bag that I have in the freezer with just pieces and parts of chicken that I'll use for broth at some point. Okay, so now I've got my chicken here. This is just all the parts. And all I'm gonna do is season this up with some salt and pepper. I was gonna show you back here, uh, back there, I have that pan that I cooked the potatoes and vegetables on. Uh, so that is soaking at this point with soap and water on there. And that's because that stuff burnt on there. I don't know if I really agree with the cooking method of adding the broth to the potatoes to cook them in the oven. That was a little bit weird to me and honestly kind of like unnecessary, I think. Um, so that's not how I'm going to write the recipe when I put it on my website, on my um, Brown Family Recipes website, because I just feel like that is really unnecessary. I've never seen any recipe that really said to do that either so that was a little strange but i wanted to follow the recipe as it was written and give it a shot i think you could just roast the potatoes like in oil you know olive oil or avocado oil or whatever you like to use and have a better result um so okay that is what i'm gonna say about that so i have my grill going outside i am going to grab a couple of things a little bit of paper towel, a little bit of oil for my grill grates, some tongs. I just got these chickeny, but that's okay. We'll change them out about midway through. For now, we will grab this, we will grab the chicken, and I'll meet you outside at the grill. So my grill is on, it says it's about 500 degrees in there right now. That's because I have a couple of burners on super high. But that's because I wanted this to get screaming hot so that I could really clean it up. I haven't cooked on this. I'm going to move my chicken over to my table behind here. 
I haven't cooked on this this year, so I wanted to be sure I could get it really, really clean and, you know, cook off a lot of those bits before I started cooking on it. Everything's going into the air. Okay, so now we have all that stuff cooked off of the grates and um, burned off of there, basically. So they're nice and clean. They don't have a bunch of junk on them anymore, but we need to oil them up with some, with some oil on a paper towel before we actually put the chicken on. And let me show you the grates here. So what I have is this side is on, a, they're both, they're all on a medium heat right now. What I'm gonna do is turn this side down to a very low flame. These will stay on medium over here, but let's put some oil first and then we'll actually get the chicken on. All right, that's looking a lot better. And we're going to put it skin side down on the basically the hot side of the grill for about five or seven minutes and then we will move it over here to the colder side so that it can cook through point so the chicken oh, it needs 20 minutes to begin on the indirect heat then we'll start to baste it and it's going to need 20 or 30 more minutes after that once we turn it over so it's a little bit longer than what i was originally thinking i went back and reread the recipe i want to make sure that i get it cooked right so um, I have one other thing that we can do while the chicken is cooking on the grill, and that is make some coleslaw. This is a true semi-homemade recipe. I'll show you exactly how I make my coleslaw. I only do one little special thing to it. I use this coleslaw dressing. This is the one that we love. I don't even try to make coleslaw dressing anymore because I can't get that flavor. Okay, the next thing is a bag of the coleslaw mix tri-color tri-color slaw mix this is just one from walmart very easy and i'll show you the only thing i do special to this is i get out my food processor and i'm going to pass it through the food processor because we like the coleslaw to be really fine so you see that is shredded in there but I'm going to pulse it in the food processor a couple of times and get it even finer. I realized I wasn't recording was the thing. So all I did was do half the bag at a time into the food processor. Don't do the full bag at once. Now it will fit the full bag, but don't do it all at once because some of it will be way too fine and then the other will not be shredded enough. So just do half and half, do it in two batches. But now we've got cabbage that is really, really fine. And then I'm going to pour in my coleslaw dressing. Okay, just mix it up and make sure that everything is coated. You can put a little salt and pepper in too if you like that. And then call it good. I need a little bit more. You can already tell. I started with about half a cup. So I'm going to add about a quarter cup more. And that's my secret family coleslaw recipe because I tried for years different recipes for coleslaw and it would be fine, you know, good enough or whatever. The only time that Alan ever liked my coleslaw was when I started to use this um, thing of dressing. I like it too. Um, but I like it even more if he likes it and will eat it. <laughs> I don't want to just make a whole thing of coleslaw for myself. This is a vinegar. It's basically a vinegary type of coleslaw. So I think because like I said, he doesn't really enjoy mayonnaise. So this is a nice substitute for that. Okay. And so I'm just going to throw this into the fridge. Okay. You can see here that I have move the chicken off of the direct heat. I cooked it for about 10 minutes per side on the direct heat, just so that it would get a little bit of grill marks and everything on it, on that direct heat. And then I moved it over to the cooler side of the grill. Set the timer for about 20 minutes to begin with on the cooler side, flipped it over, and now I'm gonna start basting it with the sauce. Definitely don't want to put the sauce onto the direct heat side because it will burn pretty quickly. The main goal, is to reach 165 degrees for your chicken. So you see, I'm not there yet with my uh, thermometer at this point, 
but just you just need to put leave it on the grill. You just need to cook the chicken until it reaches 165, no matter how long that takes to get there. So it may be longer or shorter depending on the heat of your grill, of course, but just cook it until you get the right internal temperature. Now, I do think I would have preferred if I had left these leg and thigh on there a little bit longer. The chicken breast, you don't really want to overcook, of course, so you want to pull it off when it reaches the right temperature, but the leg and thigh probably could have gone a little bit longer so that it started to get a little bit more tender. Well, I wanted to say I really appreciate you being here and watching my video, and I hope that these recipes give you a little bit of inspiration for the spring and summer coming up. If you want to try any of the recipes, they're all over on my website, brownfamilyrecipes.com. I'll leave a link to my website in the description box below. And again, I appreciate you being here. If you like the video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos by me, I'll pop some up here at the end, or you can subscribe to see my latest videos when they come out.